Oh. What a joke. I'm never gonna buy one of these put together raised garden beds ever again. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm going to whinge about how bad these slide together raised garden beds are, and I'm gonna do my best to fix it up, at least temporarily, until I can do a proper job on it. Let's get into it. I've ruined half a dozen lettuce plants. Seedlings coming up. Spaghetti chili. They're pretty cool. Check this out. Spaghetti chili. Really thin. Hey? Lovely. To be honest, I've been battling with this garden bed. Well, I've got a couple of them actually. I've got two of these large or rectangular ones and a couple of smaller ones. Small ones are doing okay. They're holding together sort of, but they're really just tree planters. These ones that hold more soil, they tend to bow out. And after a few years, the hardened plastic that's supposed to be really durable, isn't durable, starts to bow out, crack under the sun and the UV and then eventually the sides start splitting. So I've been trying to put this thing together pretty much from the very beginning, it's been a pain. They call it a pitter, pain in the, you know what. Even assembly was annoying because when you tried to slide in, as simple as it was, the notches in the corrugated iron here, or the corrugated sheeting, got notches in the edge that's supposed to slide down the notch in the corresponding post they're just not large enough and they can easily pull out. It's a little bit of pressure on that post either backwards or forwards and they click out of place and then the structure is pretty much compromised. So I've tried to push it up against the other wooden garden bed there. I've put a star picket here on one side to try to keep the garden bed together and even with all that it's still popped out the side and I was in the process of trying to put it back together frustratingly and pretty much the whole side blew out on me. I purchased these beds because they were nice and cheap. I'll just wait till the kookaburras have had their laugh at me again. How often do the kookaburras laugh at me in my videos? Oh, they seem to be quiet now. Yeah, I, I got them because they were relatively cheap and I just wanted something that I could quickly put together on either side of our veggie garden as it sits there. And I used the Hugel culture method, so the actual building of the garden bed has been great. The insides of it, the guts of it, the medium inside, the concept is good. <laughs> Seems like the whole family of kookaburras are enjoying this. Fair Inkham, they are all sitting around looking at me. So anyway, I haven't been a fan from the beginning. You know, the steel itself is quite thick and hard and, uh, and durable. I like it, but it's in two segments, two halves. And that is just ridiculous because it, it again weakens the structure. Like if you see my gourd tunnel, it's still pretty strong, but it's a thinner sheeting than that. But at least it's in one piece. And when you do secure it to a post, it's so much easier to keep in place and hold still in place. Whereas this here, you've got those two pieces to work with. And of course, if it's going to bow or whatever, those pieces aren't gonna to stay together. There's no way of holding them together. There's no screw or anything in this pack. So I would have made this completely different. I would have had the iron sheeting in one single piece all the way around. I would have had the posts made of steel or aluminium rather than the plastic that degrades over time. I mean, you know, it's stupid really, isn't it? To have a bed. I can understand when you're building a structure like this and you have wooden posts, I can understand that. You know, good hardwood wooden posts to screw into. But when you're designing a garden bed such as this, you would think that you would build the materials all out of the same durability. So an alloy post so that these things could slide into properly and increase the notch size so that they really do fit together. So that basically they just hold together no matter what. There's no way you could pull them apart. And that's exactly why I prefer these rounder type beds or the oval type beds 
without these posts. Yes, they are segmented for retail purposes and I can understand that, but essentially they are the one piece stamped out and then screwed together with stainless steel screws. And so they're, it's all steel basically. And the things last for blooming lifetime. I mean, I have those round or oval raised beds. I still have them for over a decade and they, they've hardly, I've said this before many times in videos when I'm talking about these raised beds, they've hardly aged at all and they're still going strong. You know, they'll last another 20 years, I reckon. But something like this, that's absolute rubbish. I think that's lucky to be a few years old. So what am I gonna do about it? Well, I don't have a lot of time at the moment, so I'm gonna have to do a quick fix uh, in, the, in the view that eventually I think I'll replace this bed with a proper birdies oval shaped one. Just slide over a similar sized birdies garden bed and Bob should be my auntie. But for now, I'll think about a few options and see how I can just hold it together for the next month or so until I get a chance to fix it properly. I have these beautiful hardwood posts that I salvaged from our front stairs renovation. They're really heavy, like I mean heavy as, yeah, be good for bicep curls. Could probably only do about a hundred of them and I'd be, I'd be stuffed, but I think they would be good to replace these posts. They're a good size and then just screw through onto this hardwood post. That would certainly work. But the thing is, I don't have the time at the moment to get, to get this job done properly. So what I'm gonna do is cheat. I've got the star picket in the side here. If I push that forward, I can bow that back in. I'm thinking I can then slot that side in, bodge it up a bit and just solve this issue now. And then I can move on with the rest of my day and get some things done. Get that wedge in there with along the side of that star picket. Let's see how that goes. It's gonna be close. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna work. As a temporary fix. Great. But you can still see the other side now has pulled away anyway. This whole end here had pulled away. And I don't have a star picket in that side. So what I think I'll do is I'll just drill two holes through the top and tie some fencing wire through it just to hold that together. And that'll do. It's bodgy mcdodgy, I know. But sometimes that's just what you do. So we've already got a bit of a hole here from where that stupid notch is. So I'll just make that a little bigger. And I'll put one about here on the other side there. That'll work. Now I've just got some scrappy fencing wire here. We'll go through this side first, bend him around a bit. Hold that in place. Let's wrap this up. Bring it in a little bit further. Nice, nice and strong there, yep. That's good enough for now. I just put a cap on this star picket here so that no one goes past and slices a leg open on it, because that can happen. I've seen that happen in the army. These star pickets left in the ground and people getting sliced up. I've seen it happen a few times actually. One guy once I had to jog five Ks to get emergency help. He bloomin' went down on the ground and there was a star picket from an old practice gun pit that we had on the side of the mountain and he dove down doing a fire maneuver and as he dove down he sliced his leg right open a big gash down his shin terrible wound so they can do quite a bit of damage these things if they're left in a place where people don't quite expect them i'm not saying you know anyone could fall on this but someone could just brush past and give themselves a nasty little cut and a rusty wound like that could be nasty I'll just hammer this cap on. That'll do, nice and safe. Good, I think that's job done. I wanna bring you the occasional 
off the cuff DIY stuff that I do every day in the backyard because I think that we can all learn from it. I learn from the comments section. I enjoy reading the comments and seeing other people share their knowledge. So I also recommend you guys, after you watch the video, scroll through the comments section and interact if you want to, or just simply read some of the wisdom in there or if you can, answer some of those questions in there as well. But if you did enjoy this style of video, make sure you let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for your support. Share the video. Bye for now.